Welcome back, new Darktable user. In this episode, we are going to dive into the dark room view. This is part three of a four-part series of Newbie's Guide to Darktable 4.2. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 126 of Understanding Darktable. The dark room, uh, there's quite a lot to cover, and I've just picked a random image from my recent trip to the Northern Territory. To be honest, I was a little underwhelmed photographically, um, so this is one of my best crocodile pics, but the image is not really important to the video because what we're doing is just looking at the way the dark room view is laid out. Essentially, what you've got on the right-hand side is all of your image processing modules. They're divided into groups, but all of that stuff is customizable. We'll get into that in a minute. On the left-hand side, you've got what are essentially utility modules. So things like snapshots, which behave quite a bit differently to Adobe Lightroom snapshots, uh, your history stack, Duplicate Manager, the Color Picker, Tagging Module, which is the same as the Tagging Module in the Lightroom view, the Image Information, which is the same as the Image Information Module in the Lightroom view, the Mask Manager, and the Export Module, which is also the same as the Export Module in the Lightroom view. I said that these processing modules are all divided into groups, but before we talk about the groups, I want you to click on the hamburger icon on the right-hand side and click on Manage Presets. This will invoke this window, which is the Manage Module Layouts window. What this allows you to do is to customize which of the processing modules actually appear over here on the right-hand side of the darkroom view. Now, you will have noticed, I'm just going to close this for a sec, that when you open up that hamburger, there are a bunch of predefined collections of modules. And I think from memory, the default is workflow beginner. Oh no, it's modules default. That's the default view. One thing you will hear as you spend time on my channel and as you watch other dark table content on YouTube is you will hear myself and other creators referring to display referred editing and scene referred editing. I did a whole video dedicated to just that topic. I highly recommend that, you know, if and when you're ready for it, search for it on my channel and go and watch it because it is important. Aurelian, the guy who wrote a lot of the processing modules for Darktable, has very good reasons for why we should be using scene referred editing. Me personally, I'm 99% scene referred editing in my dark table workflow these days. I'm not going to try and, you know, recover that information right now. I just say, go and watch that video when you're ready. But it will explain why there is workflow display referred and workflow scene referred here in the presets. Now, you will also notice that I've got some presets that I've made for myself, and that's where the manage module layouts window comes into play. From here, you can choose one of the existing presets, but you cannot overwrite them. What you will need to do is, let's say you were going to choose Workflow Scene Referred, you would then click on Duplicate to create a duplicate of that preset. You would then rename it, and you would then decide how you wanted to choose which processing modules you want to have visible and which ones you don't want to have visible. Now, I've explained that there's an importance between scene referred and display referred, and you're probably thinking, what does that mean for the modules that I want to use in my processing? You will find when you mouse over any module, a pop-up window appears and it will tell you that the input is either scene referred or display referred, and it will tell you whether the output is scene referred or display referred. So that sort of information is readily accessible via that tooltip pop-up. Now you'll notice at the top here, or just below the histogram, we've got the quick access panel, and that is customizable. 
And basically what the quick access panel does is it gives you condensed versions of the most popular modules. So this is a good way of just getting the, the basics of your image processing happening right out of the gate without having to be swamped or overwhelmed by all of the other options that might exist in any particular module. If you start mucking around with, say, Filmic RGB, and you then think, oh, I want to, I want to do a little bit more in Filmic, you can click this icon in the top right-hand corner of the Filmic RGB tile, and that will actually take you to the full Filmic RGB module. So that is the quick access panel. Like I said, you can go into the module manager layout window, and you can customize which modules appear on the quick access panel if you so desire. So if you know you're never gonna use Filmic, you might wanna remove it. Or if you're always gonna use the vignette module, you might wanna add that to the quick access panel. Next up, we've got the active modules. Now, this is important and I wasn't actually gonna get into this until, oh, actually I'm not too far ahead of myself, so I will cover this now. Within Darktable, there is a defined and hard-coded order in which all processing modules are applied to your raw data. Let me just break that down. It does not matter what order you do things in. That order is completely separate to the what's called the pixel pipe, which is the order in which all of the modules are processed within Darktable. And you can get an idea of the pixel pipe order by looking at this active modules group. It starts at the bottom and it works its way to the top. So you'll see that the raw black and white point is first, white balance, highlight reconstruction, demosaic, orientation, then exposure, then the input color profile. You might have thought that should have been earlier, but no. Color calibration, color balance RGB, which is a module that I've actually activated on this particular image. Same with Filmic. And then the output color profile is last. So that is the order in which all processing is done for this image. So I could go and, you know, let's say add a color zones module and let's say I was going to go and do something crazy like that. If we come over to the active modules group, you will see that the color zones module, which is display referred, hence why I haven't used it because I don't generally use display referred modules, appears right at the end of the pixel pipe before the output color profile. Okay, so just get that into your head. It doesn't matter what order you add modules to your workflow. That is not the order in which Darktable is processing your data. And again, I've covered that in previous videos. It's a complicated topic. There's a very good reason for it. And I know you're thinking, but can I override it? And the answer is yes. Am I about to tell you how to do it? No, I'm not because you're a newbie and you need to spend some time to understand the principles behind Darktable. That information I have shared in a previous video, but I'm not going to tell you which video it is, because I want you to spend time getting your head around how Darktable works before you go breaking things. I don't mean for that to sound condescending. Believe me, it felt a little that way when I first heard it, but in time you will understand. Anyway, there is a fixed module order. You'll then see that there is a base group, there is a color group, there is a corrections group, and there is an effects group. Like I said, all of those groups are customizable. You can choose to include or exclude whichever modules you want once you're familiar with what all of the processing modules are that are available. And if you want to see everything, click on modules all from the hamburger and that will display every single module in Darktable. Now, whenever you have a group selected, it will have a slightly lighter gray background on that tile. If you click that tile again, that takes you out of any group selection. And because I'm now in the modules all preset, we've actually now got the entire list of all the processing modules in Darktable 
all in this column down the right hand side. So you can do that if you just want to explore what all of the processing modules are. Below those icons, we have the search bar. So if, for example, you think, OK, I'm looking for the graduated density filter and I can't remember where to find it. You can just start typing. And as you type in more letters, it will start to narrow down the list until you find, oh, there's my graduated density. And I can then switch it on and start adding that processing to your image. Now that we're at that point, let's look at the icons which appear on all of the processing modules. On the left hand side, we have the activate button that essentially turns any processing module on or off. So once it's highlighted in white, it's active and click it again and it's inactive. You then have the title of the module and you can control click on that to add a custom title to that particular module. So you might want to say darken top if I was just going to apply the, you know, the module at the top of the image like so. And then if I wanted to create a duplicate instance of the graduated density filter because I wanted to add some darkening at the bottom of the image, I could then do that via the instances button. As you can see, you can have a new instance, you can have a duplicate instance, which basically means it will not only create a second instance of the module, but it will activate the module with the exact same settings that you've currently got. So that would be handy if in this instance, you just want to create a duplicate, but for the bottom of the frame. So we'll go duplicate. I think there's a preference which allows you to tell Darktable give me the option to name the second instance if I create a second instance and I've got that active. So we'll call this darken bottom. And so now I've got two graduated densities. I would now drag this one down to the bottom, but I need to reverse the order. So I will drag like so. And now I have my darkening at the top and my darkening at the bottom, if that was what you wanted to achieve. Next up, you've got the reset button. As you would imagine, that will simply null any parameters you've adjusted in whatever module it is that you hit the reset button icon on. It won't deactivate the module. It'll still leave it active, but it will reset all the parameter values to their default values, whatever they happen to be. And in the case of the graduated density filter, it moves the filter back to the center of your frame. And finally, we have a hamburger icon for the module. And in most of the modules, you will find there are some presets already configured for you, depending on what the module happens to be. And at the bottom, you have a store new preset option. As you would imagine, you dial in whatever parameters you want and you set it however you want it and you can then save that as a preset. Within this window that pops up, you can name it in the first field. So we'll just call it Bruce Test Vignette. I can then put a description in the second line, but that is not compulsory. If you do put a description in the second field, I'll just go episode 126, that will show up. I'll, I'll explain that in just a sec because I want to finish off what's here. Auto apply this preset to matching images. If we click on that button, all this metadata is now available. And what it allows us to do is to determine certain factors that will denote a matching image. So it might be any images that I shot at this ISO or any images I shot at this focal length or any images I shot at this shutter speed or whatever the criteria might be. You can enter a value into the relevant field and click on OK. And then whenever an image which matches that criteria is found, this preset of this module will automatically be applied at the time of import. Images that are already in your catalog, no dice. But anything you import new, yes, absolutely. Only show this preset for matching images. So 
a great use case for this might be, let's say, in one of the noise reduction modules. You might come up with a nice preset that works for your really noisy images. Now, depending on what camera you're shooting with, that will be a different ISO to what I get out of my A7 III. Whatever, right? It might be, you know, anything above 6400 ISO or anything above 12,000 ISO. And you could then say, only show this preset for images which match that criteria. So what that will mean is that within that hamburger menu for this particular module, and in this instance, we will pretend that we are looking at a noise reduction module. If you've said only show this preset for images which match, you know, 12,800 ISO or greater, then that preset won't be visible for anything that's shot at a lower ISO. Pretty cool. All right, so I talked about the description field here. So I've called the description EP126. We click on OK, and when we look at our preset menu, when we mouse over, we get the little text pop up, and that is what is in the description field. If at any point you want to use your preset, you simply click on it just like you would any other preset, like so. We can then edit that preset. So if we want to change the name or change the description or we want to add any of those other criteria, we can do that. If we decide we don't want to keep this preset, we can simply go delete this preset and it'll ask you, you sure? And we go, yes, I'm sure. And now we've got rid of it. Okay. That probably felt like a massive brain dump and we're only halfway through the darkroom view. I'm going to leave it there for now and we will have one more video to cover off this newbies guide short series questions comments feedback sing out down below and i will catch you in the next one